page 7, chapter 2, Physical Features of India. This chapter has 10 pages and is read by Shiba Mal. Page 7, chapter 2, Physical Features of India. Friends, you have already learned earlier that India is a vast country with varied landforms. What kind of terrain do you live in? If you live in plains, you are familiar with the vast stretches of plain land. In contrast, if you live in hilly region, the rugged terrain with mountains and valleys are common features. In fact, our country has practically all major physical features of the earth, that is, mountains, plains, deserts, plateaus and islands. You must be wondering, how these physical features have been formed. We will learn more about major physical features of India and how they have been formed. We find different types of rocks. Some are very hard like marble, which has been used for making the Taj Mahal. And some are very soft like soapstone, which is used in making talcum powder. The colour of soil varies from one place to the other because soil is formed out of different types of rocks. Have you ever thought about the causes of these variations? Most of these variations are caused due to differences in rock formations. India is a large landmass formed during different geological periods which has influenced her relief. Besides geological formations, a number of processes such as weathering, Erosion and deposition have created and modified the relief to its present form. Earth scientists have attempted to explain the formation of physical features with the help of some theories based on certain evidences. One such plausible theory is the theory of plate tectonics. According to this theory, the crust, that is, the upper part of the earth, has been formed out of seven major and some minor plates. The movement of the plates results in the building up of stresses within the plates and the continental rocks above, leading to folding, faulting and volcanic activity. Broadly, these plate movements are classified into three types. It is also shown in the figure given here as 2.1. It shows the plate boundaries and there are three types of boundaries. The convergent boundary, the divergent boundary and the transform boundary. While some plates come towards each other and form convergent boundary, some plates move away from each other and form divergent boundary. In the event of two plates coming together, they may either collide and crumble or one may slide under the other. At times, they may also move horizontally past each other and form transform boundary. Page 8 The movement of these plates have changed position and size of the continents over millions of years. Such movements have also influenced the evolution of the present landform features of India. Figure 2.2 There is a map given which shows the world plate margins. There are four plate boundaries shown here. The destructive plate boundary, constructive plate boundary, uncertain plate boundary and the direction of the plate movement is shown with the help of the arrows. The plates which are shown here on this world map are Eurasian plate, North Atlantic plate, Pacific plate South American Plate, African Plate, Eurasian Plate, Indo-Australian Plate and Pacific Plate again 
on the eastern margin of the map. From the box. Do you know? Most volcanoes and earthquakes in the world are located at plate margins, but some do occur within the plates. From the text. The oldest landmass, that is, the peninsular part, was a part of Gondwana land. The Gondwana land included India, Australia, South Africa, South America and Antarctica as one single landmass. The convectional currents split the crust into a number of pieces, thus leading to the drifting of the Indo-Australian plate after being separated from the Gondwana land towards north. The northward drift resulted in the collision of the plate with the much larger Eurasian plate. Due to this collision, the sedimentary rocks which were accumulated in the geosyncline, known as the Tethys, were folded to form the mountain system of Western Asia and Himalaya. From the box, Gondwana Land it is the southern part of the ancient supercontinent Pangaea, with Angara land in the northern part. From the text again, the Himalayan uplift of the Tethys Sea and subsistence of the northern flank of the peninsular plateau resulted in the formation of a large basin. In due course of time, this depression gradually got filled with deposition of sediments by the rivers flowing from the mountains in the north and the peninsular plateau in the south. A flat land of extensive alluvial deposits led to the formation of the northern plains of India. The land of India displays great physical variation. Geologically, the peninsular plateau constitutes one of the ancient landmasses on the Earth's surface. It was supposed to be one of the most stable land blocks. The Himalayas and the Northern Plains are the most recent landforms. From the viewpoint of geology, Himalayan mountains form an unstable zone. The whole mountain system of Himalaya represents a very youthful topography with high peaks, deep valleys and fast-flowing rivers. The northern plains are formed of alluvial deposits. The peninsular plateau is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks with gently rising hills and wide valleys. Page 9 Major Physiographic Divisions the physical features of India can be grouped under the following physiographic divisions. First, the Himalayan mountains. Second, the northern plains. Third, the peninsular plateau. Fourth, the Indian desert. Fifth, the coastal plains. And sixth, the islands. Figure 2.3 shows the Himalayas. It's parallel ranges, some of the high peaks and a few more mountain ranges lying in Pakistan, Afghanistan and Tibet. The Himalayan Mountains The Himalayas, geologically young and structurally full mountains, stretch over the northern borders of India. These mountain ranges run in a west-east direction from the Indus to the Brahmaputra. The Himalayas represent the loftiest and one of the most rugged mountain barriers of the world. They form an arc which covers a distance of about 2,400 km. Their width varies from 400 km in Kashmir 250 km in Arunachal Pradesh. The altitudinal variations are greater in the eastern half than those in the western half. The Himalaya consists of three parallel ranges in its longitudinal extent. A number of valleys lie between these ranges. 
the northernmost range is known as the Great or Inner Himalayas or the Himadri. It is the most continuous range consisting of the loftiest peaks with an average height of 6,000 meters. It contains all the prominent Himalayan peaks. Page 10 Given here is a relief map of India which shows the mountain ranges all over the country and it also shows its altitudinal succession. This Koroplith map shows the different shades showing the altitudes from 0 to 300 meters, 300 to 600 meters, 600 to 1200 meters and 1200 meters and above. The prominent features of Himalayas given here are Karakuram Range, Zaskar Range, Shivalik Range, also mentioned a few peaks like Mount K2, Kailash Range, also shows Aravali in the Great Indian Desert, the Malwa Plateau, Vindhyan Range and Satpura in the central part of India. The Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats making the two boundaries along with the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. Also, it shows Garokasi Jayantia Hills and the Purvanchal Hills in the northeastern states of our country making the eastern boundary for India. Page 11 Given here is a table which shows some highest peaks of the Himalayas. Mount Everest is in Nepal and its height is 8,848 meters. Kanchanchanga in India with the altitude of 8,598 meters. Makalu lies in Nepal with the altitude of 8,481 meters. Dhalagiri is in Nepal with the altitude of 8,172. Nanga Parvat falls in India with an altitude of 8,126 meters. Annapurna in Nepal, 8,078 meters high. Nanda Devi, India, 7,817 meters high. Kamet in India with the altitude of 7,756 meters. Namcha Barwa, India, 7,756 meters and Gula Mandhata, that is in Nepal, with an altitude of 7,728 meters. Now from the text. The folds of great Himalayas are asymmetrical in nature. The core of this part of Himalayas is composed of granite. It is perennially snowbound and a number of glaciers descend from this range. In a box, there's a query given. Find out, friends, the names of the glaciers and passes that lie in Great Himalayas. Also, the name of the states where highest peaks are located. From the text. The range lying to the south of Himadri forms the most rugged mountain system and is known as Himachal or Lesser Himalaya. The ranges are mainly composed of highly compressed and altered rocks. The altitude varies between 3,700 and 4,500 meters and the average width is of 50 km. While the Pir Panjal range forms the longest and the most important range, the Dholadhar and the Mahabharat ranges are also prominent ones. This range consists of the famous valley of Kashmir, the Kangra and Kulu Valley in Himachal Pradesh. This region is well known for its hill stations. 
find out, friends, the location of Masuri, Nenithal, Raniket from your atlas and also name the state where they are located. From the text now, the outermost range of the Himalayas is called the Shivaliks. They extend over a width of 10 to 50 km and have an altitude varying between 900 and 1100 meters. These ranges are composed of unconsolidated sediments brought down by river from the main Himalayan ranges located farther north. These valleys are covered with thick gravel and alluvium. The longitudinal valley lying between Lesser Himalaya and the Shivaliks are known as dunes. Dehradun, Kotli Dun and Patli Dun are some of the well-known dunes. Figure 2.5, a picture showing the Himalayas. Besides the longitudinal divisions, the Himalayas have been divided on the basis of regions from west to east. These divisions have been demarcated by river valleys. For example, the part of Himalayas lying between Indus and Satluj has been traditionally known as Punjab Himalaya, but it is also known regionally as Kashmir and Himachal Himalaya from west to east respectively. The part of Himalayas lying between Satluj and Kali rivers are known as Kumau Himalayas. The Kali and Tista rivers demarcate the Nepal Himalayas and the part lying between Tista and the Hang rivers is known as Assam Himalayas. There are regional names also in these broad categories. Find out some regional names of the Himalayas. The Brahmaputra marks the easternmost boundary of the Himalayas. Beyond the Dihang Gorge, the Himalayas bend sharply to the south and spread along the eastern boundary of India. They are known as Purvanchal or the eastern hills and mountains. These hills running through northeastern states are mostly composed of strong sandstone, which are sedimentary rocks covered with dense forests. They mostly run as parallel ranges and valleys. The Purvanchal comprises the Patkai Hills, the Naga Hills, Manipur Hills and the Mizo Hills. Page 12 Figure 2.6 A beautiful picture showing the Mizo Hills is given here. The Northern Plain The Northern Plain has been formed by the interplay of the three major river systems, namely the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra along with their tributaries. This plain is formed of alluvial soil. The deposition of alluvium in a vast basin lying at the foothills of the Himalaya over millions of years formed this fertile plain. It spreads over an area of 7 lakh square kilometer. The plain being about 2,400 kilometer long and 240 to 320 kilometer broad is densely populated physiographic division. With a rich soil cover combined with adequate water supply and favorable climate, it is agriculturally a very productive part of India. Figure 2.7 shows a few farmers working in the fields in the northern plains. The rivers coming from northern mountains are involved in depositional work. In the lower course, due to gentle slope, the velocity of the river decreases, which results in the formation of riverine islands. Do you know? Majli in the Brahmaputra River is the largest inhabited riverine island in the world. The rivers in their lower course split into numerous channels due to the deposition of silt. These channels are known as distributaries. The northern plain is broadly divided into three sections. 
the western part of the northern plain is referred to as the Punjab plains formed by the Indus and its tributaries. The larger part of this plain lies in Pakistan. The Indus and its tributaries, the Jhelum, the Chenab, the Ravi, the Bias and the Satluj originate in the Himalaya. This section of the plain is dominated by the Doabs. From the box, do you know? Doab is made up of two words, do meaning two and ab meaning water. Similarly, Punjab is also made of two words, panj meaning five and ab meaning water. From the text, the Ganga plain extends between Ghagar and Tista rivers. It is spread over the states of North India, Haryana, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, partly Jharkhand and West Bengal to its east. Particularly in Assam lies the Brahmaputra plain. The northern plains are generally described as flatland with no variations in its relief. It is not true. These vast plains also have diverse relief features. According to the variations in relief features, the northern plains can be divided into four regions. The rivers, after descending from the mountains, deposit pebbles in a narrow belt of about 8 to 16 km in width, lying parallel to the slopes of the Shivaliks. It is known as Bhabar. All the streams disappear in this Bhabar belt. South of this belt, the streams and rivers re-emerge and create a wet, swampy and marshy region known as Tarai. This was a thickly forested region full of wildlife. The forests have been cleared to create agricultural land and to settle migrants from Pakistan after partition. Locate Dudwa National Park in this region. The largest part of the northern plain is formed of older alluvium. They lie above the flood plains of the rivers and present a terrace-like feature. This part is known as Bhangar. The soil in this region contains calcareous deposits locally known as Kankar. The newer, younger deposits of the flood plains are called Khadar. They are renewed almost every year and so are fertile, thus ideal for intensive agriculture. Page 13 The Peninsular Plateau The Peninsular Plateau is a tableland composed of the old crystalline, igneous and metamorphic rocks. It was formed due to the breaking and drifting of the Gondwana land and thus making it a part of the oldest landmass. The plateau has broad and shallow valleys and rounded hills. This plateau consists of two broad divisions, namely the Central Highlands and the Deccan Plateau. The part of the Peninsula Plateau lying to the north of Narmada River, covering a major area of the Malwa Plateau, is known as the Central Highlands. The Vindhyan Range is bounded by the Central Highlands on the south and the Aravallis on the northwest. The further westward extension gradually merges with the sandy and rocky deserts of Rajasthan. The flow of the rivers draining this region, namely the Chambal, the Sindh, the Betwa and Kane, is from southwest to northeast, thus indicating the slope. The central highlands are wider in the west but narrower in the east. The eastward extensions of this plateau are locally known as Bundelkhand and Baghilkhand. The Chodanagpur plateau marks the further eastward extension drained by the Damodar River. Figure 2.8 a waterfall in Chodanagpur Plateau is shown here. 
The Deccan Plateau is a triangular landmass that lies to the south of the river Narmada. The Satpura range flanks its broad base in the north, while the Mahadev, the Kemur Hills and the Michael range form its eastern extensions. Locate these hills and ranges in the physical map of India. The Deccan Plateau is higher in the west and slopes gently eastwards. An extension of the plateau is also visible in the northeast, locally known as Meghalaya, Karbi Anglong Plateau and North Chachar Hills. It is separated by a fault from the Chodanagpur Plateau. Three prominent hill ranges from the west to east are the Garo, the Kasi and the Jaintia Hills. The Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats mark the western and the eastern edges of the Deccan Plateau respectively. Western Ghats lie parallel to the western coast. They are continuous and can be crossed through passes only. Locate the Thal, Bhor and the Pal Ghats in the physical map of India. The Western Ghats are higher than the Eastern Ghats. Their average elevation is 900 to 1600 meters as against 600 meters of the Eastern Ghats. The Eastern Ghats stretch from the Mahanadi Valley to the Nilgiris in the south. The Eastern Ghats are discontinuous and irregular and dissected by rivers draining into the Bay of Bengal. The Western Ghats cause orographic rain by facing the rain-bearing moist winds to rise along the western slopes of the Ghats. The Western Ghats are known by different local names. The height of the Western Ghats progressively increases from north to south. The highest peak include the Annai Mudai with the altitude of 2,695 meters and the Dora Beta with an altitude of 2,637 meters. Mahindra Giri, altitude 1,501 meters, is the highest peak in the Eastern Ghats. Chevroy Hills and the Javadi Hills are located to the southeast of the Eastern Ghats. Locate the famous hill station of Udigamandalam, popularly known as Uti and the Kodai Canal. One of the distinct features of the Peninsula Plateau is the black soil area known as Deccan Trap. This is of volcanic origin, hence the rocks are igneous. Actually, these rocks have denuded over time and are responsible for the formation of black soil. The Aravli Hills lie on the western and northwestern margins of the Peninsula Plateau. These are highly eroded hills and are found as broken hills. They extend from Gujarat to Delhi in a southwest northeast direction. Page 14 The Indian Desert The Indian Desert lies towards the western margins of the Aravali Hills. It is an undulating sandy plain covered with sand dunes. This region receives very low rainfall, below 150 mm per year. It has arid climate with low vegetation cover. Streams appear during the rainy season. Soon after they disappear into the sand as they do not have enough water to reach the sea. Luni is the only large river in this region. Figure 2.9 there is a picture given which shows the Indian desert. Barkhans, crescent-shaped dunes, cover larger areas, but longitudinal dunes become more prominent near the Indo-Pakistan boundary. If you visit Jaisalmer, you may go to see a group of Barkhans. The Coastal Plains The Peninsula Plateau is flanked by a stretch of narrow coastal strips running along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal on the east. The western coast, sandwiched between the western Ghats and the Arabian Sea, 
is a narrow plain. It consists of three sections. The northern part of the coast is called the Konkan, which stretches from Mumbai to Goa. The central stretch is called the Kannad plain, while the southern stretch is referred to as the Malabar coast. Figure 2.10 shows the coastal plains. The plains along the Bay of Bengal are wide and level. In the northern part, it is referred to as the Northern Sirkar, while the southern part, it is known as Coromandel Coast. Large rivers such as Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri have formed extensive delta on this coast. Lake Chilika is an important feature along the eastern coast. From the box, do you know? The Chilika Lake is the largest saltwater lake in India. It lies in the state of Odisha, to the south of the Mahanadi Delta. The islands. You have already seen that India has a vast mainland. Besides this, the country has also two groups of islands. Can you identify these island groups? Figure 2.11 shows an island. Locate the Lakshadweep island group lying close to the Malabar coast of Kerala. This group of islands is composed of small coral islands. Earlier, they were known as Lakative, Minakoi and Emintive. In 1973, these were named as Lakshadweep. It covers small area of 32 square kilometer. Page 15. Kavarati Island is the administrative headquarters of Lakshadweep. This island group has great diversity of flora and fauna. The Pitti Island which is uninhabited, has a bird sanctuary. From the box, Corals. Coral polyps are short-lived microscopic organisms which live in colonies. They flourish in shallow, mud-free and warm waters. They secrete calcium carbonate. The coral secretion and their skeleton form coral deposits in the form of reefs. They are mainly of three kinds, barrier reef, fringing reef and atolls. The Great Barrier Reef of Australia is a good example of the first kind of coral reefs. Atolls are circular or horseshoe shaped coral reefs. From the text, now you see the elongated chain of islands located in the Bay of Bengal extending from north to south. These are Andaman and Nicobar Islands. They are bigger in size and are more numerous and scattered. The entire group of islands is divided into two broad categories. The Andaman in the north and the Nicobar in the south. It is believed that these islands are an elevated portion of submarine mountains. These island groups are of great strategic importance for the country. There is great diversity of flora and fauna in this group of islands too. These islands lie close to equator and experience equatorial climate and has thick forest cover. From the box, do you know India's only active volcano is found on Barren Island in Andaman and Nicobar group of islands? From the text, a detailed account of the different physiographic units highlights the unique features of each region. It would, however, be clear that each region complements the other and marks the country richer in its natural resources. The mountains are the major sources of water and forest wealth. The northern plains are the granaries of the country. They provide the base for early civilizations. The plateau is a storehouse of minerals, which has played a crucial role in the industrialization of the country. The coastal region and island groups provide sites for fishing and port activities.
Thus, the diverse physical features of the land have immense future possibilities of development. Exercise Question 1. Choose the right answer from the following alternatives given below. 1 of 1 A landmass bounded by sea on three sides is referred to as A. Coast B. Island C. Peninsula or D. None of the above 2 of 1 Mountain ranges in the eastern part of India forming its boundary with Myanmar are collectively called as A. Himachal B. Uttarakhand C. Purvanchal or D. None of the above 3 of 1 The western coastal strip south of Goa is referred to as A. Koromandal B. Konkan C. Kannad or D. Nadan Sirkar 4 of 1 The highest peak in the eastern ghats is A. Anaimudi B. Kanchanchanga C. Mahindragiri or D. Khasi Question 2 Answer the following questions briefly. 1 of 2 What are tectonic plates? 2 of 2 Which continents of today were part of the Gondwana land? Page 16 3 of 2 What is the Bhabar? 4 of 2 Name the three major divisions of the Himalayas from north to south. 5 of 2 which plateau lies between the Aravali and the Vindhya ranges? 6 of 2. Name the island group of India having coral origin. Question 3. Distinguish between. 1 of 3. 1 of 3. Converging and diverging tectonic plates. 2 of 3. Bhangar and Khadar. 3 of 3. Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. Question 4. Describe how the Himalayas were formed. Question 5. Which are the major physiographic divisions of India? Contrast the relief of the Himalayan region and that of the Peninsula Plateau. Question 6. Give an account of the northern plains of India. Question 7. Write short notes on the following. 1 of 7. The Indian Desert. 2 of 7. The Central Highlands. And 3 of 7. The Island Groups of India. Map Skills On an outline map of India, show the following. Mountain and Hill Ranges the Karakuram, the Zaskar, the Patkaibam, the Jainthia, the Vindhya Range, the Aravali and the Cardamom Hills. Second, Peaks, Ketu, Kanchanchanga, Nanga Parbat and the Annamudi. Third, Plateaus, Churanagpur and Malwa Plateau. Fourth, the Indian Desert, Western Ghats and the Lakshadweep Islands. Project Activity A puzzle is given here. There are graticules spread over 17 columns and 20 rows, each mentioned with an alphabet. And hidden are the names of peaks, passes, Ranges, plateaus, hills, and dunes. Try to find where these features are located. You may start your stretch horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. You were just listening to the chapter Physical Features of India that contained 10 pages. This chapter was read by Shiba Mull. Thank you.